Now, some of you may have heard about the tragedy that happened at the Brooklyn Half Marathon last weekend. If you hadn't already heard about it, a 32-year-old man finished the race and then collapsed soon after. He was taken to the hospital and unfortunately he did pass away. So that is absolutely horrible and it always hits me a little harder than other deaths I hear about when a runner dies because we associate running with health. We hear time and time again that running is healthy, running is good for us, we're going to live longer. And ultimately we know that to be true, but it still doesn't take away from the sting that a runner dies basically from running. Now we know it's never from running. There are always some other underlying conditions. Now the Brooklyn Marathon, it was a tough weekend for those guys running. It was very, very warm. It was extremely humid from the start of the race on and it only got warmer. So we also know that a lot of people are going to get into trouble. And the last count that I saw, I think was 15 runners were hospitalized during and after the Brooklyn Marathon. So that got me thinking. That got me thinking about this video. And I was thinking about how dangerous is it to run a marathon? How many people actually die from running marathons? And I looked it up and I have an answer for you. Oh, and this is also the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about successes and definitely want to hear about those setbacks. But let's talk about death by marathon. Now, right up front, I want to say that none of the studies that I'm going to be looking at are very recent. We haven't had any of these types of studies in the last couple of years. But this is actually pretty ideal because if we don't like the results that I'm going to give you, you can just write it off and say, well, nah, that wasn't very recent. Stuff has changed since then. Okay, but the main thing that I'm going to be looking at to base this video on is a study titled Mortality During Marathons, a narrative review of the literature. And basically this narrative review looks at several other studies that have been conducted over the last, well, a long time. Some of them are a long time ago. It's okay because I want you to go into this with a healthy dose of skepticism. In fact, anything I say on this channel, I want you to take with a healthy dose of skepticism. Now, before I start going into the data, I don't want anyone to worry about running marathons and dying because of it. It is extremely rare. In fact, towards the end of this video, I'm going to talk about some other things. I'm going to give you some examples of some other odds of events that are going to show you just how unlikely it is that you will die from running a marathon when we compare it with other things that also seem unlikely. And of course, we have to recognize the availability heuristic, which is probably very strong with you and I. We we are runners, we look at a lot of running stuff, even I am contributing to it because I'm talking about death during the marathon. And basically a heuristic is a mental shortcut and the availability heuristic is when we base our opinions, when we base our knowledge on the most easily accessible information. And because deaths in marathons are so rare, they are often greatly publicized. So whenever one happens, we usually hear about it. And that causes us to access that information to form an opinion about marathons and how dangerous they are and, and how we can die during them. When in reality, it is very, very unlikely. So with that said, let's get into it. So the narrative review that I'm looking at was conducted in March of 2018. All right, so that's not too long ago, but just because they reviewed the literature in 2018 doesn't mean that the data they were actually looking at is that recent. In fact, it's not. And just to let you guys know how they whittled it down, how they knew what articles to look at, they only looked at English language articles, results relevant to half marathons, ultra marathons, and other endurance events, those were taken out, and also deaths due to trauma were not included. So in the final analysis, the final review of literature included 14 articles. And guys, I respect your time. I am not gonna go into each and every one of those 14 articles, but I'm going to go into a few and then we're going to look at the overall results because really that's what we want. We want someone to just condense the information into nice bite-sized pieces so we can take away like a single number, right? Ultimately, that's what we want. We want something that we can throw out at a dinner party. Although if you are talking about death during marathon at a dinner party, probably best to change the topic. Now, the first paper I want to look at was published in 2007. It looked at 26 marathons and all 26 of these marathons were held in the US. And these researchers looked back 30 years. So we've got a lot of data. And this study looked at a little less than 3.5 3 million participants. So we've got a big sample size. And out of all those participants, there were only 26 sudden cardiac deaths. Again, this 15 out of the 26 marathons had no deaths, which actually isn't surprising. I, I know I said it like it was surprising. Most marathons don't have deaths. But anyway, they found that the average age of fatalities was 41 years old. 81% of the fatalities were male, 19% female. Now this may or may not be interesting to you, but they had autopsy results on 24 of the 26 deaths. And the results showed that 21 of the 24 autopsies, the victims had coronary artery disease. Electrolyte abnormalities were thought to be the cause in four of the deaths, and one of the fatalities was down to heat stroke. This paper that we're looking at found that most of the fatalities occurred within a mile of the finish line, and the result showed that there was one death for every 126,626 participants, and that works out to about 0.79 per 100,000 people. Put that number in the back of your head, 0.79 per 100,000 people. Okay, this next study I want to bring to your attention was conducted in 2012, and it looked at race results between 2000 and 2009. During that time, in the races they looked at, there was about 3.7 million 
million runners. Of that number, there were about 2.2 million men and about 1.5 million women. During that race, they identified 28 people that had died during the race or within 24 hours of finishing the race. And we're going to start moving along a little quicker here. And they found that the male death rate was 0.98 per 100,000 people and the female death rate was 0.41 per 100,000 people. But the overall death rate was 0.75 per 100,000 people, which equals one death per 132,798 runners. But I need you to read between the lines because if you are a woman, your chances of dying are significantly lower than if you are a male. Now, even though the age range of those that died were between 22 and 68 years, the median age was 41 and a half years old. The median distance before the runner died was 22 and a half miles. Seven of those runners completed the marathon before dying and 18 deaths occurred after mile 20. Cardiac and cardiovascular etiologies accounted for 24 out of the 28 deaths. And get this, this study found that people were most likely to die in October and 27% of the participants in this study raced in October. Okay, this next study I want to tell you about was also conducted in 2012 and this one actually included half marathon results. So if you are a half marathon and not a marathon and you've made it this far in the video, that's enough. So the time period that the data was collected in this study was slightly different from the last one. In this study, they took the data from January 1st, 2000 to May 31st, 2010. Well, I know some of this data is getting a bit back there, but it's still interesting, right? So during this time frame, it was estimated that about three and a half million people ran marathons and 6.9 million people ran half marathons. During this time frame, 59 cardiac arrests were recorded. 40 of them happened in the marathon, 19 happened in the half marathon. In this study, the incident of cardiac arrest during a marathon was 1.01 for every 100,000 participants. In total, 51 of the 59 cardiac arrests were male, and in the marathon, 34 out of 40 cardiac arrests were male. So all in all, male marathon participants had a cardiac arrest rate of 1.41 per 100,000 runners. The mean age of the people that died was 39 years old, and the death rate in marathons was 0.63 per 100,000 runners. In half marathons, it is significantly lower at 0.25 per 100,000 runners. Now, even though the marathon rates are very low, we can't ignore that half marathon rates are substantially low. Guys, I'm going to link to this narrative review in the show notes, so if you want to go over it, it is open access, so it's very easy to just open it up and read the whole thing through. I just want to give you examples of two marathons. We'll start with the London Marathon. So as of 2018, over a million people have run the London Marathon, and the London Marathon yields a death rate of 1.39 per 100,000 runners, or one death for every 71,933 runners. Now let's look at the Boston Marathon. So between 1897 and 2011, 496,492 runners have run the Boston Marathon and quite a few more have run it since then. And based on those numbers and the people that have died during the Boston Marathon, the death rate can be calculated at 0.6 per 100,000 people or one death per 144,700 runners, which actually makes the London Marathon twice as deadly as the Boston Marathon. Food for thought. Now guys, I know that we can pick and choose these numbers to kind of fit our agenda, fit what we're looking for. But the point is, is that running a marathon is extremely safe. In fact, when the authors of the review analysis combined all the data from all the studies that they looked at, they came up with a combined death rate of 1.04 per 100,000 people, which is about one death per 96,207 runners. So guys, ultimately what I want you to do is not worry about dying from running a marathon because it is very rare, extremely rare. So let's compare some of these marathon rates with possibly dying from other causes. Now remember, most of the deaths that came from running a marathon were cardiac events. And did you know that your odds of dying from heart disease are one in six? That's the general population. And I got these numbers from a site that looks at the United States. But still, heart disease is a very high cause of death. In fact, it's the number one cause of death in this country. So even though the deaths that occurred during a marathon are heart disease related, the chances of dying from heart disease during a marathon are astronomically small. Probably because runners, we're a healthy bunch. The chance of dying from COVID-19 is one in 12. Now, that seems absolutely crazy now in 2022. But these numbers were compiled back in 2020. And in 2020, things were pretty dire on the COVID-19 front. So remember, your chance of dying in a marathon is about one in 96,000. Here in the United States, your chance of dying in a motor vehicle accident is one in 101. Your chances of dying from a fall are one in 102. Now this one is only applicable to the United States, but your chance of dying here from a gun assault is one in 221. Your chance of dying from choking on food is one in 2,745. And your chance of dying from a bee sting is one in 57,825. So my friends, if you are a runner of marathons, if you're a runner of half marathons, if you are a runner at all, keep doing it. You are likely healthier than you would be if you didn't. And you're probably going to avoid some of these other deaths. Maybe not bees because we're running outside. But anyway, was this a bit of a downer of a video talking about death by marathon? Let me know in the comments. Guys, I had a good week of running. Started off on Monday with 11 miles. Super easy. Now the temperatures are getting very high. So I'm going to be doing a lot more easy runs. Tuesday, I went out. I ran 12.1 miles again. Very easy. Had some new running gear to test 
that day, so that's always a good time. Wednesday was my scheduled day off, and that went just about as well as you would expect. And then because I took Wednesday off, I was pretty happy to knock out a workout on Thursday. And perhaps you noticed, maybe you didn't, but I skipped my workout on Tuesday. But Thursday, I knocked out a solid 8.2 miles. I warmed up for two miles, then I did 5.2 miles at tempo pace, and then I cooled down for one mile. And basically, at this time of year, when I'm really not training for anything in particular, my tempo pace is really just how I'm feeling. I'm kind of gauging the pace by how fast I could run for an hour. And I really feel like I'm putting in an effort when I am running at that speed. And I also knew that I didn't have another workout until the following Tuesday, so I knew I had to push it just a little bit. Friday, I knocked out 11 miles, very easy. And then on Saturday, I went to downtown Sarasota and I met up with a friend. And I run with my friend Tyler fairly often, and the miles just drift by when you have someone to talk to the entire time. And we knocked out 14 miles that day. We got caught in the rain, but it turned out to be a beautiful sunrise, and all in all, a pretty good run. That was probably my favorite run of the week. And when I say favorite run of the week, I mean it was my favorite run of the week up until the next day, Sunday, when I went out and I ran 10 miles. And for this run, I went out to Lido Beach, and I spent those 10 miles running up and down the beach. It was sunrise, it was just lovely. And I got some good running footage. And that's what it's all about. And that brings my week's total to 66.38 miles, which is about 106.81 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. Guys, don't forget to let me know about your week of running. Remember, successes and setbacks. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.